Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Fleet Show. My name is Chris Wong. I got a bunch of entertainment news and content for you today. Uh, but before I get into all of that, I'd like to thank my newest members of the Ping Pong Fleet Show. Thank you so much to the M word, uh, Talvivi Swolf Suafoa. Sorry, I probably mispronounced that. Uh, Nomo Lin. Thank you so much for joining the members. As a, as a member of the Ping Pong Flick Show family, I truly appreciate it. I also appreciate all of the subscribers on here today. All right. Well, let's get into the topics. The first topic of the day is that apparently there is no more Cara Dune figures for The Mandalorian. Yeah, this is coming from The Hollywood Reporter. Hasbro has scrapped plans to make more Cara Dune figures after the Mandalorian actress Gina Carano was fired last week over social media posts. Now, I covered why she got fired over uh, the social media posts uh, last week, and this is kind of the effects of that. You know, once you get fired, you kind of, they got to do something to your character, and it seems like they're just going to get rid of Cara Dune's character, unsure if they're going to get somebody else to play Cara Dune or just write her off entirely. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see about that. But for now, no more toys for Cara Dune. Sorry. <laughs> okay, and the next topic is another movie. Apparently, is no longer shooting back-to-back. -back. This is the Mission Impossible 7 and 8. The reason is not because of things like COVID or delays or maybe there's something wrong with number 8 or something. Uh, no, it's actually because... You know, this is coming from Horwick Hollywood, but other sites have um, reported as well. It's because they are they're of Top Gun 2, because there's promotional marketing for Top Gun 2 that they need Tom Cruise on for. So he won't be available to shoot 8, uh, which is unfortunate. Everything just stops right at him. But I guess that's the way they could just recoup and then do things together. I don't know if meaning that there's they were going to film 7 and 8 because of all the COVID restrictions, so it's better to just do it and get it get done with. Or there's actually a story there in which 7 goes into 8 and it doesn't end at 7. And it's like, you know how every Mission Impossible was pretty much its own story, its own mission? Maybe it's a bigger mission and it just has a cliffhanger and then it continues on to Mission Impossible 8. Regardless, this is Tom Cruise. He's going to find a way to make it work, and he's, he's going to find a way to make it happen in any case. He's going to do what it takes to get this going because he is that guy. He is that guy. He's like, if I'm going to make a movie, I'm going to make a movie. He it does not phone it in. He's going to do. He, he gets in like 150%, and he's all in on it. So definitely, don't worry. There's, we haven't even seen Mission Impossible 7. So um, they're definitely going to get into 8, uh, um, you know, hopefully sooner than later in any case. Um, you know, but be careful, Tom Cruise. You know, <laughs> you're doing your own stunts. You know, we want to keep you safe so we can see more of your awesomeness um, because he's, he's an incredible actor and a producer uh, as well. So, all right, another incredible director that never really got to shine. Um, and who I'm talking about is the Raid director, Gareth Evans, because remember when he used to have a Deathstroke movie? Yeah. Well, he talks a little bit about his Deathstroke movie, which is kind of cool. The Raid director, Gareth Evans, talking about his Deathstroke movie. I think it's interesting that it isn't really canceled. Now, I don't know what he means by it really isn't canceled. We should let HBO Max know we want this. And I would have to agree with that. But let's listen in on what he had to say. Um, look, I, when it comes to Deathstroke, which is the quicker answer, uh, I got approached by, about it. Um, I didn't hundred percent know a lot about the character at the time. So I did a deep dive mm -hmm. and started reading a bunch of materials, uh, thought it was cool. I had a cool concept idea for sort of like a really lean, like, you know, nothing more than a hundred minutes, uh, origin story that would feel really kind of like within the vein of the sort of the Korean noir films that I was watching at the time and um, really into. And, and so I was like, oh, okay, I can do something with this and, and, and make something kind of cool with it. I spoke to the guys at uh, DC about it and, and they were, they were into it. They were, they were, they, they, they liked the concept. And I spoke to Joe who was supposed to be playing the lead at that time. And then I think, I think justice league came out. Um, and then I think there was a change of personnel 
and then suddenly Deathstroke stopped being the priority project for them. And so mm. I think they were trying to reconfigure things and then see if they could go in a different direction with some of the projects or whatever, or tonally shift things. And so then in the end, I found myself in a position where, uh, with Deathstroke, where uh, it just kind of fell by the wayside and then, you know, didn't have any follow up. And so I was kind of like, okay, I guess this is just not happening now. And so that, and that's just really where it's been since then. So it's kind of just like hung in the ether somewhere. And then, um, so he doesn't actually say it's still happening. So I don't know where this tweet came from about that, but it's definitely, it's just hung in the air. There's, there's no movement on it. He feels the studio has changed directions. And this is the case for all those other films that they were talking about. Remember Joker and Harley film? Remember the Supergirl movie? Um, Batgirl movie, Nightwing movie, Gotham City Sirens. You know, it's just, there was so many projects that they were throwing out there um even at steven spielberg movie where is that black cock or something like that that, that where that go ava duvernay's new gods all these projects are like in limbo here but because and i'm thinking because joe manganello he's over on hbo max well he's he's doing army of the dead and stuff like that but he's also Yo, know, Deathstroke on HBO Max in Zack Snyder's Justice League. This will be a great opportunity to reignite that after Zack Snyder's Justice League. Like, this could be part of the Snyderverse, if you will, right? This reinstates these characters into HBO Max streaming and have originals uh, of these characters. I mean, I could... I would love to see that. I would love to see either the Batman versus Deathstroke movie where Joe can be in that as well. I'm sure he'd definitely love it. He would love this one. Uh, a hundred minute short little origin film in the vein of what he's, what did he say? A Korean noir war, war film, Korean war films or noir films. I forgot what he said, but it, it that's awesome. That sounds pretty awesome. Um, I, I would love to definitely see that. And, uh, and Gareth Evans, uh, definitely with the action of the raid. Imagine that Deathstroke with the raid uh, stunt uh, action and everything. Wow, Mar that would be a sick movie, and I would definitely love to see that. So, if possible, I think with Zack Snyder's Justice League could reinstate uh, kind of all these actors, including Joker, Jared Leto as well, because you you do see some of him in Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think this is a paving the way for uh, another brand, if you will, another type of DC brand over on HBO Max. And I think uh, that could be definitely, definitely be exciting. I know you guys would definitely want that. All right, since we're talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League, just a little bit, um, let, let's get into Zack Snyder's Justice League, the trailer stats. Now, the trailer stats came out, you know, that first 24-hour period where we're trying to look at it and see how it goes. Um, I'm going to bring out Luis Fernando. He's very good at uh, putting all these statistics together. That's it. The Snyder Cut trailer finishes 24 hours with 9.7 million views on Twitter across Zack Snyder's Justice League, Zack Snyder, HBO Max, and Warner Bros. UK on pair with uh, on par, I guess, with uh, Godzilla versus Kong's 9.8 million. So on YouTube, biggest debut on HBO Max channel with 9.3 million views, still trending number one most viewed in the platform. So that's amazing, amazing. Uh, between recent debuts from Warner Media and official YouTube accounts, Zack Snyder's Just League on HBO Max channel is third biggest debut of Warner Media, only behind the Batman's 10 million and Godzilla versus Kong's. 15.8 million both at Warner Brothers channel. Maybe 2.5 more views than Zack Snyder's Just League DC fandom trailer in, in 24 hours. So that's amazing. That is a huge thing. It's really hard actually to get to the trending page. And as I've demonstrated yesterday, it was trending at number one. It was trending at number one this morning as well, as you can see. And then it kind of fell a, a little bit downwards because, you know, every day something trends. But it's still on the trending board. Uh, uh, at this point in time, I want to reach a uh, look at it. Um, it's 14,696,000 views right now, number four on trending, and it's pretty fast. Like if I refresh this, it's probably going to change uh, to a different number uh, because just literally before I started this, it was at 14,500 something. So it's getting quicker. Oh, there you go. See, 
it's now 14,799. And I just refreshed it um, because I had this up about five for five minutes now, but it's definitely getting up there. And it, it really clearly shows a lot of people are getting to see this now. A lot of people are catching up in this and realizing that this is definitely a different movie. Now, yes, it didn't beat the Batman Godzilla versus Kong, but like I said, HBO Max has only 537,000 subscribers. I think they increased by like 50,000 subscribers ever since Zack Snyder's Just League, I, I, something like that. Um, I could be wrong with those numbers, but it's definitely something huge. Um, but now, not, Warner Brothers Pictures has over 9 million subscribers. So to see that this uh, uh, half a million account was able to get this movie trending at almost very close to the batman which warner brothers on a nine million uh account posted that is exceptional that in comparison you'd have to realize that that is exceptional imagine if warner brother pictures shared it uh like their brothers over in the uk warner brothers uk shared it warner brothers um i think it was france or another another you know country shared it but warner brothers like usa never shared it um and that is you know unfortunate but it gained traction anyway it gained a lot of noise anyway despite them trying not to share it uh all they did was kind of retweet hbo max once uh that was it and they even tried putting up the godzilla versus kong little teaser uh as well so that's quite unfortunate as well but um that's but it's it couldn't stop you can't stop this train you know what i mean <laughs> they couldn't stop this train right they can't stop this charging bull so why even wave a red cape out <laughs> yes i just pretty much that's dialogue from the trailer <laughs> um but it, it makes sense you know i mean it, it's it's amazing what um has transpired of this how is does this um you know kind of translate to well, not box office money. Translate to HBO Max subscriptions and and viewership. I don't know. It's probably a little bit more difficult because that is not available worldwide. It's available in a lot of countries, uh, but it's not available worldwide, which it needs to because worldwide can watch the YouTube trailer, but the worldwide can't watch you know Zack Snyder's Justice League. And you know Warner Brothers are really making it difficult for making that happen, but. Uh, definitely, I think we'll still prevail. And just seeing the noise, uh, like I said in my Zack Snyder's just the uh, trailer aftermath and the Snyder Cut aftermath, that it it really showed the numbers there. The numbers is there. The 24-hour response is phenomenal, and it clearly just really fuels the Justice League Two conversation. I would think, or at least restoring the Snyderverse. Uh, I would think so. That is exceptional. Um, but keep watching. I mean, I've, I haven't stopped watching it. Today, I've watched it maybe like six or seven more times. Uh, just before I came on, I had it on as well. Um, and there's also a Junkie XL music that came out, though that was leaked. Um, so um, I didn't know that. I think the official reveal for that on Watertown, you know, Water, what it was, what it was called, something music, um, that's going to be uh, Water Tower music. That's going to be on the 17th. So that's in two days. And I think it will come out officially on YouTube from, from there on. So, uh, and then I'll review that later. All right. So we're talking about Zack Snyder a little bit. Um, I want to share this with you. And this is actually coming from over from our buddies over at uh, Minuteman. You know, I shared you that he had talked, Zack Snyder talked about the probability of uh, Justice League 2 and, and so on and so forth. There was a lot more stuff that went on in that interview uh, with the, uh, you know, the Italian fans over there. But this also was brought up and Geek 5 Nations pulled it out um, in in. in about Batman v Superman, the IMAX remaster. Zack Snyder says IMAX remaster of Batman v Superman will be on 4K Blu-ray. So he said, I believe so, I believe so. Blu-ray, 4K, yes. I just approved the Blu-ray box the other day, so it for sure will exist on Blu-ray, and then I think it will exist on HBO Max. So that's how he thinks it's going to transpire. So if you're wondering about that Batman v Superman IMAX remaster, blu-ray 4k first and then it'll go on hbo max you know so uh and i can't wait i can't wait for that remaster i need a, i need the imax one um i still think 
it is restoration of IMAX of the entire movie in IMAX uh, rather than just some scenes. I could be wrong on that. Uh, so don't quote me on that, but um, uh, I can't wait to see regardless either way uh, what will come of that. So let's see this. All right. Um, we were talking a little bit about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Ray Fisher came out uh, today once again calling out some execs here by name ray fisher uh this is the tweet that he put out today there's only one reason I, I haven't been sued by joss whedon toby emmerich jeff johns john berg or walter hamada they know i'm telling the truth accountability or entertainment you can see my tweet right under him it says ray is telling us who needs to go right he's telling us the names he's naming them right now these are the men responsible, uh, also in, in impeding or you know, in, you know, trying to get involved with the Justice League investigation and things like that. There's some stuff happening behind the scenes at Warner Brothers that are really shady, and these are the men and the are are responsible for this entire mess, right? Uh, and they gotta go. You know, he, Toby Amrick's next. Jeff Johns is all, being done slowly. <laughs> slowly slowly being well done <laughs> uh john bird pretty much out uh already and then walter Hamada as well um and uh, i don't know when this is going to happen i don't know if it's going to be after zach snyder's justice league but he's really fanning the flames and uh, giving the opportunity for the victims the people in the investigation to you know also speak out as well and they slowly are especially you know the um the buffy the the buffy crew uh the angel crew now david boreanas i don't know if i'm saying that right has spoken out on the misconduct allegations that's angel himself against joss whedon joining a growing growing group of former buffy the vampire slayer and angel cast members to support their former co-star charisma carpenter so there's a lot more people uh, coming out as well, including uh, actors Danny Strong, Adam Bush, Tom Link, and then I, I believe a, a writer as well. She came out and uh, spoke against Joss Whedon as well. So there, it's a growing number, and this is just Joss Whedon. I would expect maybe there will be a little bit more about the other ones, uh, but I think uh, I think as Warner Media gets a bigger voice and much more over that Warner Brothers hold here. Um, you know, it, it will be much more substantial. So I'm getting, I'm really curious to see about that. I mean, Dev Deadline reported it. I know, and this was later on in the day, 5 p.m. So we'll probably hear about it a little bit more tomorrow. Uh, within this article, they reached out to Warner Media. They declined to comment about um, the recent tweet that Ray Fisher did. Um, and that's all they pretty much could report on in this. So Justice League's Ray Fisher slams much accused Joss Whedon again. Warner Brothers execs in latest social media scorchers. So it's a, like I said, it's an ongoing situation. We'll continue to find out what happens in this story. And let's see if justice will prevail. All right. Now let's uh, go into Zack Snyder stuff. Yeah, I you saw the thumbnail. We're, we're going to talk about it. The next movie that, you know, Zack Snyder is putting out is Army of the Dead. There's a new look at Army of the Dead. This is the, from, you know, uh, courtesy of Empire Magazine. They've got a new article coming out. There's just, just a snippet of it. But I'm going to sh share with you right here. Army of the Dead, Dave Bautista on what sets Zack Snyder's zombie film apart. There's an exclusive image. Not that one, uh, because we already saw that one. Ever since breaking through with his hulking and hilarious turn as Guardian of the Galaxy's Drax in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Dave Bautista established himself as a major new Hollywood hardman, brawling Bond and Spectre, uh, decking Ryan Gosling hard in Blade Runner in 2049, and punching up the likes of Hotel Art Artemis, Stuber, and Final Score. And if we're still waiting to watch his take on the Beast Rabin in Den Denise Villeneuve's Dune, this year also sees him take the lead in Zack Snyder's long-awaited new film, Army of the Dead, a post-apocalyptic zombie heist flick. Coming to Netflix later in 2021, Snyder is returning to the zombie genre 17 years after his directorial debut, Dawn of the Dead, remake for an apocalyptic thriller in which Bautista Scott Ward, okay, his name's Scott Ward, leads a team of mercenaries into an undead-infested 
Las Vegas to pull off a massive score. Here, here's a brand new exclusive pick of Bautista and Matthias Schwegelfer. Uh, I butchered that. <laughs> as the group's safe cracker dieter, dieter, as seen in the new issue of Empire, on sale Thursday, 18th February. So here is the new pick right there. That's awesome. For a moment there, I thought he was holding kryptonite because of the green, but apparently, no, it's it's just a, a glow light. For Bautista, Arming the Dead gave him the chance he'd long been awaiting for to enter zombie apocalypse. I'm a zombie fan, he tells Empire on set. I tried to get on Walking Dead for years. I said I would come and play a zombie for free, but they said, you're too big. And with Snyder's genre mashup, promising scares, action, and heist thriller twists and turns, he found something that stood out in the long-established genre. For me, there had to be something special about a zombie film for me to sign up. What sets us apart is the heist, but there's a whole bunch of different layers to the film. As myth, with many, uh, many Zack Snyder films, there are many, many different layers to that. So there you have it. There is a new look at Army of the Dead. I am excited for this movie. Uh, it's going to be something really different and special, <laughs> definitely. Uh, and also, this is the guy from in the, the prequel film, right? This is going to be the rom-com uh, heist film. So I guess... I don't know what happens to a significant other. Maybe she don't make it. <laughs> but yeah, he's there. Uh, he's from the prequel film, and he meets up with that current film. So that'll be an exciting a little lore. You know, Zack Snyder is really expanding his lore beyond just Zack Snyder's just league. He's got Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead is his own little sandbox, if you will, where he can play in it. He can produce things, have other directors come in and make those spinoffs and things like that. It's a, definitely a stone quarry baby there. Uh, so I can imagine something like happening like that with the Snyderverse over on HBO Max, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. But you know what? He's not over. It's not over. He's got more plans down the pipeline, right? And this is another shout-out to Minutemen. Um, and uh, I don't know the other two, but I know Soup's Batsy. He's um, an awesome dude. He um, They had a great uh, – a lot of scoops – in that uh in that little podcast there but zach snyder working on king arthur so um you know a couple of the articles brought this up now triggered a lot of people of course because anything that zach snyder is in triggers a lot of these uh you know verifies for some reason zach snyder developing faithful retelling of king arthur's legend um and i'll go here director zach snyder confirmed he's developing a retelling of the king arthur legend I'm working on something, but we'll see, Zack Snyder said in an interview with Minutemen. Uh, I've been thinking about some kind of retelling, like a real sort of faithful retelling of that Arthurian uh, mythological concept. We'll see. Maybe that will come at some point. So um, he teased that in this um, interview here. I'll link again this interview so you guys can go and check it out. But of course, King Arthur, it's a big character. All right, the Knights of the Round Table. We know Zack Snyder's one of Zack Snyder's favorite films, Ex Excalibur. I love Excalibur as well. It's awesome. It's mythological. It's fan fantasy. You know, we the picture here. I think is the the King Arthur, the um, the one that came out a while back with Clive Owens in it. And yeah, that was more probably a more realistic take because it was like more Roman. But I still like that fantastical knights in shining armor, you know, uh, kind of thing that that they that that happened, right? Uh, I love that because you know I I read the Thomas Sir Thomas Mall Mallory uh, book, a difficult read, but I did read it back in college. And I love that story. And I love Excalibur. I love watching that. I definitely want to see a Zack Snyder version of this. Now, I'm amazed. I mean, why would this not be something people want? Imagine 300, that stylistic fighting in a King Arthur film, epic. Uh, I, I would think it was going to be probably four hours, this movie. Uh, and the style of Zack Snyder. I mean, I could almost see the colors pop. The the vignettes are so immaculate and beautiful. This is exciting. I want to see a King Arthur. I hope he gets to do it. He has a lot of projects down the line. But having him get excited, he's going to make his own Excalibur. That's what's happening here, right? Now, people are getting triggered off about, you know, oh, what is the faithful retelling? And all of a sudden, everybody's a King Arthur expert for some reason. But whatever. It's his Faithful retelling, his 
retelling of the Arthurian mythological concept. He wants to tell a King Arthur story. Let him tell a King Arthur story. Like, lay the fuck off. Like, get off, man. It's like, whatever, right? <laughs> if any other director would come in and says, I'm going to do something that people are like, oh, wow, that's cool, that's cool. Oh, but not Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder, uh, I'm a huge King Arthur fan. Don't touch King Arthur. You're going to ruin it. And it's like, fuck you, man. You don't, you, you, you don't even, you don't even think, you didn't even thought about King Arthur until he mentioned Zack Snyder. You know what I mean? So, uh, but I'm excited uh, for this. I'm all in already. I can see it visually in my head. Uh, a Zack Snyder version of King Arthur, and oh man, and the Knights of the Round Table, it's going to be awesome, it's going to be beautiful, oh, I, I'm, I'm drooling, <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait to see if he can get into that, that would be great, that would be fantastic, oh uh, man, I, I would definitely want to see that happen, so, um, and uh, I know you guys are too. I mean, just I'm just excited at that concept of him making an actual King Arthur, the Knights of the Round Tables, Legend Zack Snyder style. It's amazing. All right. That is it pretty much of all the topics today. Let's get into the members' comments and questions. Like I said, if you want me to read your comment or question, um, um, you know, please join as a member down below and then plug in a comment or question, and then I'll definitely read it. So here we go. Okay, the first comment is from Clay Cox. I don't see how this cannot get a sequel. To be honest, the hype is already ma massive. Yeah, uh, I feel you, man. Carlos and purely pure fire, Chris, absolutely beautiful. And this regards to my uh, little, um, you know, Justice is Gray edition or my version of it. Zach will do a, a, a thousand times better, but I want to see how that looks like. So I appreciate it, man. Uh, uh, Talvivi. Talofa, Chris, this movie is too big for not to show in theaters. If I was AT&T, they would put this movie in theaters. You can't have this movie as big as this for not shown in theaters, at least in IMAX. I know, uh, right? I mean, he's got a 10-minute intermission already set up. It's ready to go. They just got to put it in theaters. So, the, you know, fuck you, Warren Brothers, for not doing that. So uh, and if I was AT&T, I would pressure, I would tell the, the little guys down there says, hey, you know, when, you know, we, we took you over, you know, we can probably cancel you, too. So why don't you just, you know, put that movie out? But, you know, whatever, you know, and, and I sometimes I can get it because they want to maybe pe have people subscribe to HBO Max. But if it's getting the movie out there and people want it, people are willing to pay tickets for it. Why? Why say no? I don't I don't understand that concept. Uh, I hack fruits, eight lane super highway, man of steel, Batman v Superman, David Ayer Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, Zack Snyder's Justice League, Batman versus Deathstroke, uh, part two. Part, oh, that's a nice little list there. Um, yeah, you know, this kind of sounds like a great Snyder verse, if you will, right there. I like it. I like it. Uh, some lip sync, lip sync delay here and there, somewhere in the three minute range. Oh, I appreciate it. I didn't know that. Uh, do you know, Chris, is all VFX shots in the trailer are final? 99.9% .9 of it looks fantastic, but the cyborg shot in this nightmare future looks iffy and very flat, for example. Uh, yeah, I have no idea if it is. Um, some people are calling that out as well, but at this point, I think, um, you know, Zack Snyder is pretty stressed out in this whole thing and he took a vacation. You know, he's like, Whatever you can do to get it out, he's going to get it out. And so if that's how it's going to look, that's how it's going to look. So I don't mind it at all. Uh, yeah, I meant Army of the Dead in the tweet. Oh, shoot. Where are you? Okay, I got to go back and look at that. Michael Serlo Mathelier. Hey, Chris, check out the dark side scene. I believe Superman is at the top of the screen hovering with his arm crossed. Black dot looks like Superman zoom in. Top center screen. Dark side is actually walking towards him. What? Wait a minute. Let's. All right, let's look at it together. Let's let's go. Let's. Okay. All right. So I have here. Um, I can't see. Let me see if I can zoom in here on this. You know. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I think this is what you're talking about. Right? I mean, is that the one you're talking about? This is a very low res pick, but if that you think you're so you're saying this might be Superman right there. Oh that would be interesting. So I'm hoping hopefully 
openly put them out. Um, that someone has a higher res pick of that and to see if that truly is like Superman in the distance there. But yeah, I do see someone floating up there and the only guy I could think of that would be floating up there if that's truly is something floating up there would be Superman. I don't know. What do you guys think? You think that's it? <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell you. All right. Uh, that's cool. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. Hi, Chris. Do you think Snyderverse and Batflick is still on the cards with Walter and Mata Tobi Emmerich at the Helm of Affairs? Um, for them, no. Like, I would expect at this point that Warner Media would say, you know what? Screw you guys. Uh, we're going to do this anyway, and we're going to do this on as an HBO Max original, an HBO original, um, and um, like uh, Watchmen, because Watchmen uh, went to HBO, and it didn't go through Warner Brothers uh, at all. So there could be, uh, you know, the Watchmen TV series, so there that might be a, a way to uh, get that finalized, right? So it's possible. Wow, I just saw the clip where Snyder is talking about the poor distribution of the film. He can see, uh, yeah, you can just see the frustration in his face. But on a positive tip, Snyder and the internet sensation Boss Logic are teaming up to do some amazing internet posters, which will drop on March 9th. You know what? Here's what I think. Despite the roadblocks, the hunger of the fans is pushing this through. There's traditional big budget marketing, and then there's what Zach is doing. Zach, Debbie, and Ray Fisher are simply talking to the fans directly on social media, and that is getting the job done more efficiently. Like I said, I see why Warner Brothers Pictures has blocked this film. People will be happy and angry. Happy that the Snyder Cut is here and angry at Warner Brothers Pictures for trying to block this. Not only that, but like... Why didn't they put that out? You know, they're going to be angry at Warner Brothers Pictures. Like, what the fuck? What are you doing? Why did you change that? So DCU is a mess. But if they can bring this Snyderverse over to the streaming world, everything will be okay again. Warner Brothers is dead. Go lay down with Joss Whedon. <laughs> Snyder. Oh, that's hilarious, Lee Fusion. Uh, theatrical. Come on, Chris. The real name is Shite or uh, Whedon's Death. Wow. <laughs> uh, over 9 million on HBO Max uh, YouTube, and that doesn't count all the other YouTube channels that have the trailer posted and have hundreds of thousands of views, and IGN posted it on his channel, and at that moment, it has over 3 million views. It's definitely all over the place. Definitely. Mahalo, Chris, and Ping Pong Flicks family. The positive reactions, memes, etc. are so heartening. This incredible movie and movie is gaining such amazing traction. I guess the word for today is educate. Let those who think we've already had Justice League know what we're getting come March 18th. Uh, the fight goes on, brothers and sisters. Yes, educate wherever you can. If someone asks you, what the heck is a snare cup? It's your opportunity uh, to tell them how that went by, how that went out, and and what is the Snyder Cut? Definitely, John Cleese is a as as fellow associate producers. That is our job. <laughs> Sean Gates, John Cleese is alleged to be wintergreen. Yeah, uh, that was a, allegedly also as well. So he may show up in the movie. You know, you know, you never know. Henry Cavill finally posted a trailer on Instagram. I believe yes, he did. So Henry Cavill. Gal the, the Trinity is complete. Henry Cavill, Gavido, and Ben Affleck. They're both all, all three of them posted on Instagram stories. So there you have it. Danny Gray. I've seen a certain person start with hate Jody's corner, complaining about silly things. This is an old movie. This is my dark side. Dark side is 500 pounds too light. Even complaining dark side has armor like he never wore it in. The what? He, he complained dark side has armor? Does he not look at the comics? What? Um, and animation can see in his face how hard he's trying to be controversial because unfortunately that will get him attention even though at time posting it was like 850 or so likes and 3,000 plus dislikes Um, you know even though he's got dislikes it actually adds to the engagement so you're still helping him out even though you're hitting the dislike uh, people you will use Snyder's name forever for attention for their channels I cannot wait for this to be a monster hit to shit up all these haters he'll still hate on it and he'll he'll probably enjoy people coming on to watch him hate on it. So the best thing to do is, you know, like Andy Signore, ignore Signore and leave Jody in the corner, okay? Uh, like the Mandalorian says, this is the way. This is the way. Uh, I know Warner Brothers doesn't like us Snyder fans, but call us Russian bots? Can they fall any lower? I have no idea. 
That is the most insane, obscene thing they could say. It's stupid. It's it's rather really stupid. It's like they have no other excuse at that moment. They're like, ah, just they're just rushing mods. Like, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Geek Haven Jan 86. Chris, let's get the view count to a ridiculous number. If you right-click on the trailer, it will give you an option to loop. <laughs> oh, I've had it playing on my laptop for three hours now straight. Ha, <laughs> fuck Toby Amber. Uh, well, now they know that you do that. No, okay. Harry just shared the trailer on his Instagram. Yes, he did. Uh, uh, yes. Love, Henry. God bless that man. Uh, we live in a society where we must embrace the meme. To that end, let's take a cue from Bioshock and ask Warner Brothers, Warner Media, and at and and thus HBO Max, would you kindly release the air cut, restore the Snyderverse? Here's another one, because Russian bots in Mother Russia, Snyder Cut watches you. I don't know why I did the tongue thing, but... <laughs> Imagine Michelle Rodriguez in the Snyderverse in some way. She's certainly entitled to it with her support. I wonder what other known actors and actresses outside the Snyderverse have ex um, similarly expressed support with Ray Fisher describing the Snyderverse as an eight-lane superhighway and therefore no cul-de-sac whatsoever. We should look at those folks and give them first dibs on whatever roles they'd be great for. Yeah, imagine if they were just... They weren't just like, oh, I want to support it because it looks cool. But imagine if they were supporting because they're secretly in the movie. You know, imagine that. Michelle Rodriguez is in the movie. I don't know who she is, but maybe she's in the movie. Journey Smollett. Maybe they, maybe Zack Snyder said, you know what? I like her as Black Canary. Let's put her in the movie. And imagine that. Watching Zack Snyder's Justice League, the Nightmare Vision, and she's part of the ragtag team. You see Black Canary walk out. Whoa. <laughs> That'd be pretty nuts. Let's dwell on Ray Fisher's description of the Snyderverse as an eight-lane superhighway for a bit. Uh, doesn't that kind of indicate that the Snyderverse is such a big thing for HBO Max and Warner Media that it can be expanded beyond the five-part arc? Zach may be pretty much done with directing more in it after JL3, but all that and Zach uh, and wait, and all he and Deb and Jim Lee would need to do afterwards is to be collective. Kevin Feige for what's to come afterwards. Soup's now the beacon of hope, the arc built up to it, and adult Bruce Kent in a futuristic series as the new half Kryptonian Batman, more Wonder Woman, and all those characters right there, and on and on and on. Yeah, I mean, the possibilities are endless. That's why it's an eight lane super highway. Uh, hey, in his intro to the latest trailer, Zach called it the first trailer. It kind of implies there's indeed going to be another one, doesn't it? Yeah, and Grace said there's going to be another one uh, right before March 18th, so I can't wait to see what that would, would, would entail. And what is he going to show in that one? Ray Porter said that Step's head rolls to Dark Side, who stops the roll with his foot. Yeah, um, Zach said that as well. Uh, thank God this trailer saved me. WandaVision is trash. Cannot believe the hype it's getting. Cannot wait for Zack Snyder's Justice League, something worthy of the hype. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been watching this trailer like nonstop, seriously. Like, I mean, not as much as Geek Haven Gen 86, but <laughs> pretty close. Uh, oh, yeah, seven. But, you know, I had work too. So, I, but amazing trailer. Uh, um, amazing. Uh, I can't wait to watch it again and again. I can't wait to watch it on the big screen. Uh, watch it on HBO Max because that one it has no, like, doesn't need to render or anything. It's like absolutely HD and absolutely, you can, you know what, I'm going to watch it out there. I'm going to look out for that Superman hovering in that dark side, maybe. Um, you know, with some motion, maybe we can see something there. Uh, it's personal for Toby and Walter adopted that perceived insult and Anne Sarnoff in her infinite blindness. So much for only women being a better judge of character. Oh, shade <laughs> gave Toby a pro uh, promotion. They explicitly teach being a moral and institutionalized derogatory hierarchies in business school and upper management's expected expects it. That's the analysis that usually gets suppressed. Um, I don't know what that is. Uh, vested interest of those same people. Justice insults the unjust. Yeah. Uh, great, fantastic words there. <clears throat> Especially in a way that I probably uh, would never be able to put together. But amazing words there, DJN. Mario El Bendicion de Dios. What's up, Chris? What are your thoughts on... Uh, oh, wait a minute. I just skipped one here. Zach P. Have none of us noticed someone floating in the disc? Yeah. Uh, you walked, oh my fucking, just noticed after watching for the 17th time, I just talked about that, and you guys may be right, man, I'm, you know, you guys may be right, I'm starting to think that may be the case, but I'm gonna take a, a better look at that, and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do a video on it, or maybe, what's up, Chris, what are your thoughts on Jude Law playing Mr. Miracle, with Anthony Hopkins playing High Father, both, I think, will be amazing, 
Oh, uh, yeah, Jude Law would be pretty cool, uh, especially when they kind of killed them. I don't know if you got killed off in Captain Marvel, but you know what? They did you disservice. Come over on this side uh, and, and play Mr. America. <laughs> My tin foil, God's. Oh, this is my Godzilla um, little trailer reaction, uh, trailer two reaction. Godzilla's eyes have been taken out by Kong, and the blue light is emitting because he's actually spoiler alert. Mecha Godzilla. By the way, current status of HBO Max Zack Snyder's Justice League trailer on YouTube is 13 million. It's 14 now, almost 15 by the time we, I'm done recording this, and number four in training. But remember, it's a coldest, a coldest act. Yeah, because I'm stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and that's just me, you know, being, I don't know, dumb Toby, I guess. Uh, okay, Keith, uh, you think Nightmare Joker's teeth are gone? It's pretty clear that he has a lisp in the trailer. Yeah, I was trying to look carefully because in the trailer, you can kind of see like there's something on his teeth, so I'm wondering about that. Uh, also, we're seeing Joker in the Nightmare where he may have no purpose. The Joker we're familiar with enjoys chaos and causing havoc, but there's nothing left to bring it down. It's almost ironic. Thus, the we live in a society line to see Joker in a, wor in a world that is nothing but chaos. Thoughts? Definitely. Um, I think his purpose um, is gone. Plus, you know, I still think Harley Quinn don't make it out alive, and maybe he was, you know, you know, he definitely was in love with her, and that gave him a little bit of purpose. Like, he is, I almost think he's almost like, um, you know, kamikaze type, like he's going to do what it takes, you know, um, and enjoys that chaos at the same time. So bring his own version of chaos to dark side, if you will. I'm defo getting that shirt. You deliver UK. Yes. Oh, Teespring. So I have a shirt. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, my wife made this a shirt. It's a Godzilla versus Kong design, um, many sizes. So you can check it out on Teespring. So up here, this is this is a um, ping pong flicks you see there. And of course, it's kind of like the poster about, but she drew it herself. Uh, I'm kind of copying that. And, but the cityscape is not New York or any of those cityscapes in the trailer or whatever. This is Hawaii. This is Waikiki, uh, Waikiki Beach. And she added the uh, YouTube. But on the backside is amazing. The backside is let them fight. That's me. That's me right here. Uh, yeah, I look kind of old, <laughs> but but I'm wearing all the God shirt. I'm wearing the all the God shirt, and if you get the shirt, you can look here if he has some Easter eggs in there. Um, but the YouTube button right there, and it's a let them fight. She drew this awesome. She's an incredible artist. So please, if you can, uh, I'll link it in in the uh, maybe the, the the comments as well or something or pin it or something when I wake up. But yeah, yeah, take a look at that. It's not on the bottom Teespring, but if you go to the actual Teespring store, uh, then you you can get it from there. So yeah, thank you so much, Lee Fusion Robinson. Ha ah, these thumbnails are ridiculous. It is. I mean, I'm literally, I was like, oh, <laughs> so I was like, that's the shot. I'm going to use that uh, for my reaction thumbnail. But definitely, uh, I'm going to go and check out that dark side to see if there's Superman in the background uh, in, in, um, in motion. And uh, yeah, let's follow up on that. I think that's amazing. I may even tweet it out or something. Um, it'll, it'll be amazing to see those details. So keep looking at the trailer. You'll probably find some more Easter eggs and things like that. And um, I can't wait to find out more about what actually you see in the trailer absolutely all right well that is it for tonight thank you so much for watching like i said if you absolutely love this daily dose of entertainment news and content please click the like button hit that subscribe button ring that notification bell keep this hot dog light on and i'll see you next time bye